Network. What's up, Sim Races Larry TJR Sim here. Today I want to go over it's about three months now that I've been using the Logitech G Pro wheel and pedals. Maybe you find it interesting my thoughts. I'll roll some B-roll here clip to, to show you the wheel in action uh, through a few of the games, uh, particularly Gran Turismo 7, Forza, uh, Motorsports, uh, which 8, I would call it, <laughs> and uh, some ERC, which the Xbox and the WERC game is on PC. And, of course, obviously, Gran Turismo is only on uh, exclusive PlayStation 5, right? Uh, but, yeah, I'll roll some B-roll here. Let's get into it. jump into it so go over some likes and dislikes still after i've been using this wheel for three months now it has been uh actually a pretty pretty fun experience it's been a joy i've been using this exclusively since i did my reviews so about three months now and um i haven't went back to my AccuForce. although i do miss my AccuForce, uh, to be honest because it is stronger than this wheel uh but i haven't been i don't miss it enough to be bothered about switching it back and forth right because the resolution is is better and it, on the AccuForce. Remember I just really soaked in and, and was playing with this. Better in the way that when it reacts on the AccuForce, it's, so much, it's, a, it's stronger, right, uh, than this one. Although, this is actually really good. So you can't, wouldn't say I would uh, turn down this wheel uh, or if you want a console compatible wheel with PC. So with that said, why would you even get this wheel? Like I said in the review, if you want to have console play, like myself, I wanted to play some Gran Turismo. I used to play it with the Thrustmaster TGD2. I really like the haptic system in the in that game. It really brought out the immersion of Gran Turismo because, let's face it, in my opinion and, and probably a lot of others, Gran Turismo's force feedback is very lacking. It is not very powerful, and it, it really needs to be amplified. You need to amplify it with some more horsepower, albeit uh, 11 newton meters of force in this uh, Pro helps bring it up a little bit. Although it's just like the, uh, the volume of your radio, right? You you can turn it up, but if you don't have enough amplification behind the scenes, which is coming from the game itself, it's only going to do so much, right? So if you have a 20 Newton meter wheelbase, it's going to bring it up marginally more, right? But Gran Turismo is just really lacking for force feedback. However, with the haptic system, because I thought the uh, haptic on the TGT2 Thrustmasters was excellent, this one surpasses it, in my opinion, much stronger uh, to where you have to actually dial it down quite a bit uh, to not overpower it. And that's where it comes into some uh, some cons as well. Uh, the, you can't really separate the frequencies in RPM from, from uh, road surfaces. I would rather amp up the road surfaces and then bring down the RPM feeling. Or only just have the RPM when I'm setting ready to go, fill in the engine RPMs, and then kind of taper off as I'm going because you're if you only run at high RPM all the time, it's just a little slight buzz in a, in a car. You're not going to have that lump, that lope feeling like you do at the starting line, per se, right? Uh, so I'd rather feel more textures. It does a pretty good job with it. It's not excellent. It's more down to the game, not being that great. But albeit, I still have a really good time with this wheel so much that I haven't really wanted to switch off because I'll go back and forth from Gran Turismo. But I've been playing a lot of Forza. This Forza has been stepping it up. Seems like here lately as far as improving AI and stuff, but so I really enjoy this on Forza. So if you're interested, it works great on Forza, whether you're using the Forza app, Game Pass app, or you're just uh, downloading the game through Steam. So I play Forza Horizon through Steam, works perfectly. Game recognizes the wheel. And then I'll play the Forza 8 for Forza Motorsports uh, through the game app, works perfectly, nothing to map. And then I'll go ahead and switch over to PlayStation. <laughs> And then I'll play some Gran Turismo on that. Or F1 2023, I played on that as well. I know it worked really good. I actually downloaded F1 2024 through Steam. Works fine on Steam. Actually, was, uh, I liked it. It's pretty good, especially with the motion rig. But uh, it uh, works good. So another another pro is that this just simply works out of the box. Works for virtually all the games that are out there. Uh, and all the games that are going to be coming in the future, whether you're wondering if my AccuForce is going to be working for this game. In the beginning, this was a problem between Semi-Cube and, and AccuForce and, and others that you had to do a lot of workarounds to get them to work, right? And, well, nowadays, it's not such a, a big deal. The games come where you can customize and add your own controllers and stuff. 
Uh, however, obviously for a console, you got to have something that's licensed for it. Now with that, with, as far as another pro goes, is that PlayStation compatible, PlayStation 5 compatible and 4, all the way down to legacy play, PlayStation games as well that you can switch in the controller box here on the on the wheelbase. Uh, that's nice. Or you can use their app. Uh, you can uh, do all your settings through the app. Check out my review for all the settings go. I'll dive into that. But uh, just seamless. Probably another uh, great thing I like about this is when I want to switch between games, you have five preset settings. Uh, you just literally just click the little button on the wheelbase, scroll through to the next game, click it in, and then boom, you got all your settings ready for the next game. On the fly, it doesn't matter if you forgot to do it before you started the game or anything, it doesn't matter. It just switches over. Now, the only thing I've noticed that it has messed up on when doing that is it has changed my settings for say when I went from Gran Turismo to Forza, I forgot to change my Gran, Gran Turismo setting on the wheelbase to the Forza and started playing. And then I was like, let me switch it over because it didn't quite feel right, right? And so I I switched it over and I noticed that my Forza went to 1080 revolutions instead of uh, 900, right? Not a big deal, just switched it back on there, but that is something I noticed. So. All right, so moving on to some more positives about this about this wheelbase here. Uh, now, the beside the custom name and moving off of the custom name is the rev light. So I, I enjoy the rev lights; they actually look kind of nice. I, I like the sim race in the dark because I have the bezel kit here, and uh, you know it, it hides the fact that you have bezels. Right, it looks all nice and seamless and integrated. Uh, so the rev lights are pretty nice. I I like them. Uh, Albeit they, you can match them however it is on screen, you know, so the inside out, outside in, and left or right and all that. So you could have the same matching if you wanted to. I don't bother. I just leave it outside in, but at least it's something uh, something extra in there, right? I would rather that uh, to keep up with the times that we had backlit uh, buttons uh, like mostly everybody else does nowadays. So Logitech's are really lacking on that. This is definitely a cons a budget wheel uh, rim itself, uh, being that it doesn't have any nice uh, lights and being that I play a lot in the dark because it's just, like I said, more immersive. Uh, it would be nice to be able to uh, have some backlit buttons shining at you to uh, have an easier time finding the button you're looking for, especially when you're on a wheelbase that you switch back and forth from say PlayStation uh, set up to say an Xbox or PC set up, just trying to besides the muscle memory, uh, to, to physically look and be like, oh, I got this labeled as DRS, or I have that one as a push to pass or, or whatever, right? Uh, or traction control or ABS, you know, because you could put some custom uh, you know, uh, t um, tags on these, right, if you wanted to. But, and I'm sure, I don't know, maybe someone will make some nice ones that come out for this as well. But uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's one of the things I do like about it. Uh, and then obviously a little bit of a con in there. So mixing them back and forth, uh, in there, but, uh, also force feedback of the wheelbase itself. It seems to mimic my, my motion rig actually really well. Uh, so it seems one-to-one -to, -one to me. So, uh, everything is nice and seamless feel and it's very, uh, immersive, uh, with this wheel. So I didn't notice any lag of responsiveness in this compared to what my motion rig is, show is feeling or what I'm feeling through the motion rig, which is good. Uh, let's see. Logica also gives you some recommended settings on the website. So if you're unsure with the new game that comes out, say like F1 2024, you can go ahead and start with that and then start fine tuning it to your liking, especially for the haptic uh, portion of it. I would say uh, is, is the true force to call it uh, is, is more to individual liking as well. Uh, zero play in this QR system here. It is, I mean, this is just like the old um, uh, Fnatic uh, QR system here. As far as how it works, can't get my fingers in there, but you know it, it's zero play here. Let me go down the wheel, Nick. You can see here, you just you know you got it's got a key here, right? It's got a key. Oops, where's it at? Right in here, and then you just line them up. Boom, you're done. So it works fine. And then if you want to pull it off, just that easy. Real nice. Uh, I don't really take this off too much, to be honest. Unless I'm doing some work on the screen, then I'll I'll pull it off, and just so I don't have a wheel up here in my way, trying to see some text and stuff down here. Mainly when I'm doing editing videos and stuff, uh, I'll I'll pull it off from there. But you know, all your power goes through the device here, uh, so everything works just fine.
uh, as far as that goes. And if you do actually unplug this mid race, it actually does turn off your console. So be aware of that if in the future when they do come out with some different rims, uh, you know, you actually will kill your console and then have to turn on your console back. Uh, so there's not really any hot swapping uh, isn't available. So maybe that's a software update that you can do whenever they come out with a new rims, that would be nice to be able to hot swap on the fly without killing your your uh, rim or your wheelbase to the game because sometimes that creates problems with the game and then you have to shut the game down and restart the game, blah, 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 right? You know this stuff. So, but yeah, that's uh, another, another, another decent uh, play. I am looking forward to when they actually come out with new, new wheels. Uh, this really needs some new wheels here. Let's get on to force feedback, right? Force feedback on this. Like I, like I mentioned in, in, in the review after a month, I pretty much know within a week, whether instantly you, know you like the force feedback or not, you either know that it's lacking or, or it's, oh my God, amazing, because you came from a Logitech G29 and then this will just blow your mind, right? Then when you come from other direct drive wheels, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to find the subtle differences that you have. But all in all, this wheel, uh, the rim, the wheelbase rather, picks up all the cues that are uh, logical, right? And they feel good and strong in, in Sims, particularly more so in PC racing than on console. As far as console being in PlayStation, it's, it's still lacking. It doesn't quite have enough power. Some of the cars you play in Gran Turismo are still weak. And I would want to turn this up to say 120% gain instead of the the 11 newton meters. So if it had like 15 newton meters, that would probably be more more fun. And some of the cars you you play, mainly road cars, cars with higher downforce like the GT3 cars and stuff, those are fine. It seems to be fine for those cars. But when you get on the dirt, the dirt is super light. Even though you have the force feedback up all the way to 11. And I have the filter down and no wheel dampener or anything on there. It's still just too light. It doesn't have enough of a, a connection to the road. It's just like hopping across the road. So it's not too impressive with, with uh, force feedback in dirt to me. It's just way too light. Now when I play WRC on the PC, freaking awesome. It works really good, right? But it's just due to the console. So I'd imagine you'd have something similar with the Xbox from my memory when I used to play just console racing. Uh, on uh, Forza on the Xbox, it was similar. At one time, Gran Turismo, he stepped up the game. He had actually a lot more uh, force feedback than Forza did. And then now it's kind of reversed, right? But yeah, that's pretty much it on that one. Now let's go move into haptics. So it is very nice haptics. It's a game changer, right? Uh, it's a common word for the haptics in Gran Turismo. The reason it's a game changer in Gran Turismo is because Gran Turismo's force feedback sucks. And so you have to have something like haptics to bring up some of the, uh, the immersion factor, right? Now you can turn all the haptics off. You'll still feel road curbs, right? The curbing, will, you'll still feel that, but you won't feel any engine RPM. You won't feel any road textures. And when you do turn the haptics on, the curbing is enhanced more. Uh, but I didn't test this. This is just how it is, right? Uh, and you still feel the, you know, the, the heft of the wheel and stuff when you're making transitions from curb to curb uh, without haptics. You still feel all that, but you lose that immersion factor of feeling the road services services and the height and the experience of the curbing and stuff or the bumps that you have in the roads are heightened a little bit more, right, uh, with the haptics. So I'd rather be able to yank those way up for uh, surfaces and stuff, but it is what it is. Uh, but what else? I do enjoy the tuning feature on this on the fly, actually, because you can change your strength on the fly, whether you're Gran Turismo or you're going to the PC. I never change it. 11 newton meters is is sometimes not enough for me. Sometimes it's too strong. I'll have to turn down the strength in game. I'd rather just do it in the game and have 11 newton meters coming out constant all the time from this. But there is some cases where I'll add a little filter in there to take some of the high resonant mechanical noises out of the wheelbase and some sims, uh, and then maybe add damp dampening if I want to as well but uh, and obviously angle, angle uh, or your rotation angle right uh, it pretty much recognizes it it pulls it from the game data as far as the angle you know so when like you go to 120 24 i think it went to 360 though but they're running theirs at 400 so i did have to adjust it to 400 but most of the other games like grand turismo it automatically goes to 1080 it wouldn't matter if you put it on on five it would still be 1080 coming out of the game 
but uh, and then like four zip recognized, you know, nine hundred is is what would be your preferred, and it automatically changes that as well. So there is some uh, smart smartness in it between the uh, the settings, but it is nice to be able to change these settings on the fly, uh, especially when you're messing with the uh, true force. That's really where I use it. I'll just turn on the button, start tuning the true force as I'm driving, maybe yank it way up to something exaggerate. So I'm like, eh, that's way too much. And then dial it back down to where it feels just right uh, on the fly. And then when I'm done, I'll click the uh, menu button on the little base again and leave it alone. <clears throat> and then it's set, right, for that particular game. So that's nice. All right, so let's get on to some of the cons that I don't like about this wheel that really needs some improvement for the branding of this wheel as well as the experience of this wheel. All righty, all righty, so the cons, the biggest one, the elephant in the room is the is the lack of rim. No no more pro products, this thing's been out for two years. What the hell you doing, it's right? So Mozo seems to pop shit out like it's like it's candy. Uh, Sim Magic does the same. Heck, even Acetech comes out with stuff faster than Logitech does, and they're the newest people on the block. Uh, so I don't know what a multi-billion dollar company can't figure out how to make some more rims. So it's a little bit of frustrating. Come out with a rim already, dude. Get off your ass. So that's my rant for him. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by Logitech, by the way, because I don't have to be. All right. So, uh, yeah, rims sucks. Uh, you only got this one round rim. That's the only thing you can use it for. Uh, is It's good. Universal rim, you know, it does the, does the job. Works good for drifting, works great for uh, rally racing. Uh, some people might not like the the, the D on the bottom for, for uh, drifting. I'm not a drifter uh, in, in sims so much. I don't particularly play those as much. I admire the hell out of people that can drift really well in a sim. I can drift great on the street in a, in a real car, but I have a really hard time with it in sims. Uh, but uh, just because I, I like that feel. But anyway, maybe someone can give me some tips on, on settings, on wheel bases for, say, the Logitech for how to ma make a better experience for drifting because I would love to be able to just sit there and just roll with it, right? Because it's actually really fun when you get it right. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so you don't have any wheel choices here, right? So why not just come out with a QR system like, say, Fnatic does where you, you, you still lock into their electronics, and then you can bolt on any dang wheel rim that you want to a basic setup or simply come out with new rims with some nice uh, uh, back illumination and stuff. There is some hint that they may actually come out with that later. Like they're gonna be having maybe a GT wheel, a little bit of rumor around the net there. I don't follow rumors too much, but I did hear that uh, from, uh, from, from uh, online. And then uh, one person uh, commented on one of the videos too that they hear that they're gonna be coming out with some uh, maybe GT wheels. That'd be great. I'll definitely get a GT wheel. Hopefully it's not some ridiculous $800 GT wheel like our, our 1100 or whatever like Thrustmaster does with this nice badass Ferrari, you know, GT type wheel and you got to pay an arm and a leg for it and it's only good for that, this one console, right? So I'd rather see a universal setup where you could, uh, well actually you'll never see a universal setup for Logitech, right? It'd always be be uh, connected to the wheelbase, so it's, they won't do it like, say, uh, Sim Magic does, where you can switch it off to someone else. Uh, I don't think they would ever do that, right? They'll stick to like the, the Thrustmaster same concepts of wheels will be connected to the wheelbase, and that's all it works. But if they do come out with a nice GT style wheel, uh, that would be great with the illuminated lights. That is what I would, would hope for. Come out with a Pro Shifter because the the basic toy plasticky one that they have is is horrible. It's great for you know five-year-olds but anybody anybody that especially kids nowadays are quite a bit stronger it seems like than than uh than in the past days so you know a 10 year old's gonna rip that thing to shreds here after a while hanging on that on it also you need a handbrake they don't have a handbrake so I don't know, this stuff isn't hard to make you know it's not really hard to engineer so i don't know what takes them so long there's no COVID problems anymore no chip problems anymore don't know i don't know why they're sitting around doing nothing on this stuff, or maybe they are doing something they got perfected, you know. So, some businesses with the QRC, you know, they have to really go through a lot of uh, uh, checks and balances before they release something. So, anyway, I hope that they come out with some nice peripherals for it. They need a new rim and need a handbrake and uh, and a uh, six pattern uh, H pattern shifter and a sequential shifter. They need that as well. So that would be good. If they come out with some button boxes or something, that'd be neat too uh, to expand it because uh, the old 
you know, the regular Logitech line is actually pretty expansive as far as the modding community goes, as far as so many people making different mods for these, for their pedals and all that. So anyway, I digress. I'll get off my soapbox for that. So the standard QR system, you know, is, is very similar, like I said, to uh, Fnatic. Uh, works good. Uh, but what else as far as the... Okay, so the next con here is the brake, brake kit. So the pedals still, I don't like them that much. I mean, I don't... They're okay. They, they get the job done but uh they don't have they have a wooden feeling just like i said in my review they have a, a wooden feeling i still stick by that they're very wooden however i have came out with a elastomer kit within the kit that feels the best i'll try to flash it up here on the screen here uh that what i do like the combination that i like uh, has a little bit of a softness to it but not so wooden uh so yeah try it out see if you like that as well but uh that's the best i could get with the kit they have uh they need to i appreciate that they have a kit but they need more more elastomers in a kit so maybe have another kit that they can sell that gives you more choices switching out elastomers that would be great to help improve the feel of the pedals i actually personally think that elastomers when they're really small like this uh, and they're in their tube they don't really have room to expand or anything within that contained tube which is good because they don't wear out as much but it also is bad because they're ones you know they're only gonna they're only gonna push in so much before they start bottoming out. What I found on say, like Husenfeld, the elastomers are so much bigger. I get a lot better feel with those elastomers. Uh, and that was a big, big difference feeling when I went from Fnatic. Fnatic uses the small ones as well. And when I went to Husenfeld, it was just elastomers alone. The pressure, the, the pressure that you get on the pedals, you know, uh, 90, 90 kgs or whatever, it didn't matter. It, it was the elastomer size, the feel you got, the squish you got out of it or if you wanted to make it harder you made it harder right uh so they would take a whole redesign for a pedal to do that but maybe include some different elastomer setups in here that's in between what they have now to where you can get a a more feel to your brake when you're when you're under under braking here um and then yeah and then again all right so two more things here i have a uh, separate haptic system for it uh, when the base, you know, you got your RPMs, your engine RPM for the haptics in the, in the system, and you have your, uh, for your true force I'm talking about, your, your road textures and your bumps and stuff. Uh, have them separated where you can, where I can turn up the volume up and down between those. Uh, Cause like I said, I would, I would, and then make it where it's it, um, related, you know, like Deepox, I'm able to turn certain RPMs. I could have a really lopy engine through my, through my motion at low M and then it like goes away at high RPM. It's just buzzy at that point, but I can make it custom. But so if they would come out with something like that, right? Uh, where they can customize the uh, feel of the haptics, that's what's missing in here as well. But if they don't do that, then they don't do that, right? But uh, that would be a nice plus uh, for it. Another one is force feedback, the smoothness of the force feedback. Sometimes it's a little bit, not quite so smooth rather. <laughs> so, and, and it's probably just has to do with the uh, generally to get a smoother force feedback because they got the power, 11 newton meters of power seems to be fine. Some uh, software updates will usually kind of help smooth these settings out a little bit more. It's not like it's completely notchy, but in some games I do get a little bit of a notch feeling uh, in some of the force feedback games. F120 and 24 is fine. Forza is uh, some of the cars feel a little notchy uh, on the PC, but uh, and then uh, Gran, Gran Turismo 7 is actually where I feel it the most. A little bit notchy in the play on some of the cars uh, that, I, that that brought to my attention. Like, man, that's not that that transition from from in between those bumps and stuff wasn't quite as smooth as I would hoped. Uh, but yeah, it's mainly been on Gran Turismo is really, where I really noticed it on PC a little bit here and there on Forza and you know between whatever the signal is coming in from the game and then how this is interpreted it, it could be smoothed out some of the uh, notchiness. Now that's nitpicking a little bit. But you're at a pro series level here. And so if this wasn't called a pro, I wouldn't nitpick so much. Uh, but it's called a pro. So you gotta step it up, right? So you gotta have some options here. All in all, let's get into conclusions because that covers enough between the pluses and minuses, right? Okay, conclusion. If you're looking for a, a rim that's gonna work with PlayStation compatibility or Xbox compatibility, because they have that one as well, and PC. I actually like this choice, even with the cons, uh, better than the Thrustmaster choice. Even though Thrustmaster has a far more extensive rim collection, 
the base, the tr- the, tr- the base and the power of the wheelbase is is a big step up for say a TTT2 uh, setup for the Logitech. So uh, I would I would just you know be patient and and uh, wait for a, a nice new wheel to come in. But you know I get by just fine with this. It gets the job done. Maybe as I'm a little bit older now and uh, <laughs> I'm like. That's good enough, you know, it gets the job done. But uh, the kid in me wants some more options uh, in there and, and, and be able to personalize my wheelbase uh, to my driving style on, on particular cars, right? So rallies, I'm good with a D-shaped rim uh, and, and then it's fine uh, for me. But for GT, I want a GT style or LMP style wheel when I'm, when I'm playing those particular games. It's lighter, uh, but it just feels more correct right aesthetically uh, correct and just in your hands feels correct um so yeah if you're looking for the the a thing that does both right this is a great choice i would pick it over say the thrustmaster that's thrustmaster tgd2 is the one that really comes in in uh comparison with this one as far as uh force and and haptic system right uh the next one would be the fanatic uh, dd plus but they don't have a haptic system that works and plus they're, you know, maybe getting bought out by Corsair and who knows, I haven't heard enough from uh, lately on the web. Stick with this one over, say the Thrustmaster, a much, much better haptic system uh, than theirs, much stronger, more pronounced in there. Now, if you're not interested in console compatibility, don't look at this wheel at all. Uh, if you're just a PC guy, I wouldn't even touch it. Uh, the pedals aren't that, that you know, they're adequate, but they're not like over the moon. They're definitely not a pro level. Uh, they're more of a mid-tier uh, pedal set uh, just because they don't have enough adjustments on them. Uh, not, not enough angle adjustments like say like you'd have from Husenfeld or, or others on the market. So uh, yeah, it's, it's not quite pro pedals in my opinion. Uh, the wheelbase would be considered mm, uh, semi-pro. <laughs> so, but it, it does do a good job like I said, it's just console PC compatibility. This is when you use it. Now I'm not going to be bothered to be switched by switching off to my AccuForce because I'm enjoying Gran Turismo a lot with this wheel, right? All in all, this is a really fun wheel to play with. Uh, but, uh, so I'm not going to, until I get tired of Gran Turismo, then I may switch over to my AccuForce, but actually I'm going to move on to some other wheels that I want to review here in the future. Uh, some like Sim Magic wheels. I want to review some Ace of Techs. Um, it's kind of neat actually, but I do like the mechanical side of things too, as far as the robust, like a semi cube way that looks and stuff. I actually would like to review a semi cube later too, but I'll wait till they come out the newest version. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it. Conclusion wise, if you want a great, uh, haptic feedback system in a rim, uh, in a wheelbase for your PlayStation, I would definitely get this one over, over the rest. It vibrates so much that you actually, I feel it through my 8020 rig. Even so, even if I don't turn them on motion, I feel it, and I do that sometimes just to play it, just to see how you know immersive it is. It actually is really good, uh, but it, it is is you know it can be noisy. You can turn it up too much, and it's a little too noisy. But yeah, this is a great choice for console play. Uh, if you're just a PC player only, look somewhere else, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this midterm review here of the Logitech G Pro. Leave some comments uh, below of what you think, uh, of your impressions of your version, so others can uh, benefit from from your uh, from your knowledge, right? So anyway, see you. See you on track. I'm out.